way your visual effects work came in, really. It's the stuff that we've done that people wouldn't even notice that I'm probably prouder of, if that makes sense. I'm really proud of the opening shot of the house, you know, when we first established that house in Austria, because, again, we were limited by the fact that we we found this great location, but it was right by a ski slope. So we've had to digitally remove the ski slope and the skiers and all that lot has gone from the shot. You know, we've added in the snow and added even smoke coming from the chimney and all those things I think go into creating what looks to me even like, you know, I can see it for its seams and tape and the things that make it go together, but I buy that shot. The cage, I can't remember whether we did that before or after, but we certainly thought, well, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to take a cage over to Austria on a plane, so we'll have to do that somehow in England. We filmed you in Austria at the house that we had the exterior for. We filmed you approaching it. And then we ended up, do you remember, we had your conservatory in your own house. We got some fake snow, covered the floor with it and then we had a cage that you had, and then we just filmed the close-up of your hand. <laughs> then we just, and it cut together absolutely fine. That was the beauty of snow. Even though the, those two locations were hundreds of miles apart, you couldn't tell because it's just like, well, wide shot with the snow, and then close-up with snow. Same, same place, isn't it? Even like, we you know, we were coming from a place of no budget, Suddenly, just the fact that we were in a snowy environment, it feels like there's a world that's been built for this story, if that makes sense. In a big budget Hollywood version of this film, you would have a snowy New York or a snowy London. I think that was one of the things that we, we were struggling with for a while, wasn't it? Do we, how do we show a sort of world that is supposedly like a post-apocalyptic, almost climatic change? There was never any falling snow, I don't think. We never actually were filming in falling snow. That's all been added in post, you know, all the, all the flakes that you see. Going outside and covering you in a bit of snow, so when you came bashing through the door, that you would have snow on you and, you know, it, it made sense. And so when you watch the film, it works perfect because you've just come from an exterior which is absolutely covered in snow. I think it's one of the things that caused us so much pain in the post-production was how much we either had to fix or adjust or adapt to with with sort of visual effects to just some I mean I think sometimes that was kind of our saving grace in terms of the lack of budget I mean, it is the classic line for, for filmmaking but it was like not that we intended to always fix it in post but it just became a necessity We had that great exterior location, but we had the problem of we also got bright sunlight with no, not much cloud cover, so the shadows were quite harsh. It was a stone's throw from the door, wasn't it? Like a ski slope with people just relaxing and skiing. But it was so close that the shadows from people going up on the ski lift were being cast on the house. So every time we did anything outside, there would be shadows visible. That's really, really the biggest takeaway for me is that once you have an idea or the inception of an idea, you've got to follow it through to its, to its end because that's actually the hard part. Despite what everyone else says, 
about filmmaking and writing and all the critics that are out there waiting to bring you down. The hardest part is doing it. 